And so we had just talked about Newton's third law yesterday, that for every action force, there's a reaction force. Now, we said that that reaction force is equal to the action force, and it's also facing the opposite direction. So if you think about it, I have um, an action force this way, and then a reaction force facing the other way that's the same length. Why don't these two forces cancel each other out? Well, the reasoning behind that is when you consider the system. Um, what are we talking about when we say what those forces are acting on? And in this case, we have an apple with legs apparently uh, pull, pulling an orange on a cart. Um, so just to make it clear, we've got the apple over here. He's pulling the orange on the cart. Well, if we just consider the orange by itself, so I'll put a little dash circle around the orange. The only force acting on the orange is the uh, pull of the apple. So this way. We know the reaction force of that pull, since no force can be alone, the reaction force is going to be, since the apple pulls on the orange, the orange also pulls back on the apple. But since the apple is not part of my system, um, we don't really care about it. We don't care about that force that the apple pulls back on because it has nothing to do with the orange. Now on the other hand, if I call the apple my system, now we have the orange, uh, now that orange pull on the apple uh, is what's holding the apple back, but the force that the apple is putting on the orange doesn't matter necessarily to the apple, it's only affecting the orange. So the, the key here to see is that the forces are acting on different objects. If they're acting on different objects, they can't cancel each other out. Now you might say, what if I'm looking at the whole system as one? What if I'm looking at the apple and the orange together as one whole system? Well then wouldn't the forces cancel out if I'm looking at them both together? Well, the forces inside the system cancel out, but there's nothing acting outside the system uh, as a whole other than maybe the friction in the tires and then you have the uh, push off the ground by the apple, but it's all within the system. So since the system as a whole is not uh, have any external forces acting on it, it's not going to be moving. So therefore, they do cancel out in this sense, but then that's because you're calling the whole thing your system. Um, so we'll take a look at a couple examples of what we're talking about here. Uh, because so let's say your friend says that you can't move a football by kicking it because the reaction force provided by the kick ball would be equal and opposite to your kicking force. So if you kick the ball, wouldn't the ball just put a force uh, back on you? So how would you set your friend straight that you can still indeed kick the ball? Go ahead and answer that on your note sheet. Um, so let's go ahead and, and further look at this with this example here. Uh, just kind of setting you straight on Newton's third law. Uh, we have a horse and a farmer who wants the horse to carry him in his cart. The farmer saying, giddy up, pull the cart so we can get going. And then the horse is uh, resisting, saying, well, for me to pull the cart would be a futile effort. Because you see, if I pull on the cart, the cart will pull back on me. By Newton's third law, the forces are equal and opposite, so they'll cancel out. A zero net force won't get us moving. So the farmer thinks about it. Uh, he just used Newton's third law, and the farmer thinks it through, and he says, wait a minute, I don't care about the force that exerted on you. I care about the force exerted on the cart. 
if you pull the cart, I guarantee it'll move. Well, the for horse says, well, how can I move forward when the cart pulls backward on me? It doesn't make any sense. So he thinks about it a little bit more, the farmer does, and he says, just push backward on the ground. By Newton's third law, the ground will push you forward equally on you, and then I'll simply follow along. So once the horse gets going, the farmer compliments the ground there, saying the ground is doing a very good job. So if we look at that in terms of a force diagram here, uh, apparently the horse, is, uh, the horse has turned into a donkey. But um, we have the two, my pulling force of the horse on the cart. Notice how, yes, they are equal and they do point in opposite directions, but they aren't going to cancel each other out because they're on two different objects. This force is pulling the resisting the horse or donkey pulling it backwards this force is um, what's pulling the cart forward so on two different objects they're not going to cancel each other out and then we have this force of that's pushing the donkey forward that's the force of the ground pushing the donkey forward and in order to get that force the donkey actually has to push the earth back. So the harder the donkey pushes the earth back, the harder the earth pushes the donkey forward. Same with this uh, frictional force we have over here. We have the, earth, the um, earth puts friction between the tire and the um, ground. Well, in the same sense, there's also a frictional force backwards stopping the earth from moving in the opposite direction. So again, these forces have to be acting on different objects, whether it's the earth and the donkey, whether it's the donkey and the cart, or whether it's the cart and the earth. Interaction forces are acting on two different objects. That's why they don't cancel each other out. So thinking about that, uh, when we think about the net force that acts on the cart, on the horse, on the ground, well, um, the net force acting on the cart is going to simply be, if we go back, you have the, so let me get a different color here. So the net force on the cart is going to be the pull of the horse minus the friction from the ground. The net force on the horse is going to be the push of the ground on the horse minus the pull back from the cart. And then the net force on the ground, in this case, is going to be the... Uh, force the, um, well I guess I should say the frictional force provided by the cart minus the force that the horse pushes on the ground. Now the other question I have there for you is once the horse gets the cart up to the desired speed, must the horse continue to exert a force on the cart? Um, yes, since there is that frictional force the horse is going to need to keep overcoming the friction. Um, if there was no friction and the horse was in outer space and uh, it got the cart up to that desired speed, then no, it wouldn't have to continue exerting a force to keep it going at a constant speed because remember that would mean it was e equilibrium. So just one last idea here. Uh, if I Remember, every force needs to have a reaction force. So uh, you can challenge somebody and say there's no possible way that you can punch a piece of paper with a force of 200 newtons. Because in order to do that, the paper would have to uh, respond by uh, giving you a reaction force of 200 newtons. And that's just not possible. For instance, if you hold the paper and uh, 
your friend punches through it with that kind of force, the paper is just going to rip because the paper can't put that kind of force back on you. So, uh, of course, if you have the punching bag and you put 200 newtons, a huge force into it, the punching bag can handle that and it's going to put that force back on you. And that's kind of the key of this chapter for every interaction between things. There's always going to be a pair of oppositely directed forces. I know this might have been a little confusing, uh, just trying to eliminate any ideas of action and reaction being on the same object. They always have to be on different objects. I'm just going to end on a verse and just like um, how forces, the harder you push on something, the harder it's going to push back. Um, the less you push on something, the less it's going to push back. I just kind of and uh, wrapping this chapter up with a Bible verse, the golden rule. So whatever you wish that others would do to you, do also to them. So not only a, a idea in physics, but also a universal idea in all sorts of areas of our lives.